It's good to see you all. Thank you again for coming for our second ver extension of the Shir. We spoke about last week uh, the main overview of the Sugya of Tcheles. How can, uh, how can we potentially identify the Mirik Shrunculus as the candidate for Tcheles? Um, and is it, uh, does it work well? And we're going to do a quick, over a quick summary of that, uh, of that Shir just at the beginning, just to, get a, to help us get our place. Um, and if anybody who by any chance missed last week, they'll still be able to follow somewhat. And then we're going to go through some of the main questions on using the trellis made by the Mirik Shrunculus as a, <coughs> as a candidate for trellis, the issues of using that, uh, that trellis, and can we still use it in that regard. Okay. And then lastly, we will discuss the questions of how many strings to wear, assuming that one should wear trellis, and which way to tie the trellis. And of course, this, I will give the same caveat that I gave at the beginning of the first year, is that in no way, shape, or form am I telling anybody what to do or how to do or if to do. We're here to discuss the sugya. If one wants to take what he found here and then go to the, his rav, he's more than invited to do so. We're here Adira, to try to identify and to go through the sugya. So let's start with a recap of part one, which we did last week. So we went through... <clears throat> um, a series of proofs that identifying that the Murex Shrunculus was indeed the Chilozen that was used by Chazal. And the first is that we discussed that the Murex Shrunculus uh, has many different sources that both are, uh, match uh, from the Torah sources and historical sources, both from secular sources and Torah sources. The first, we said, was that the dissect of the Murex Shrunculus is, ident is, is independent <coughs> excuse me, from the rest of its blood, just as Tysus states regarding the Chilazan of Tcheles, it's Mifkat Pakid. We saw a picture about that. Um, I was supposed to show a video, which I didn't show last week. Um, number two, the Mirik's dye is described as best when extracted while the snail is alive, as Chazal say regarding the Chilazan of Tcheles. Yet again, something that we discussed. Um, number three, Mirik's dye is identical in appearance to Kalu Elon, with the exception that the latter can fade precisely as Chazal tells us regarding Tcheles. Number four, the Greek name of the Murex, which is Parpura, is used by Chazal and Rishonim for Tcheles. Number five, Achorin explicitly identified the Chilazan of Tcheles as the Amiric snail. They say it openly. We saw the Taifes Re'im, we saw the Chavis Yar, we saw others that uh, specifically identify not only calling it by its, its name Pure Parpura, but it also say that this is the Chilazan that was used to dye Tcheles. Number six, <coughs> the Amiric's dying in the times of Chazal was widespread in the exact places that Chazal described the dying of Tcheles. Number seven, the Murex dye was extremely expensive as the Gemara says regarding Tcheles. Number eight, the dyeing process is exactly the same as Chazal describe it. And number nine, the cessation of widespread Murex use parallels that of the cessation of Tcheles production, as we explained, due to the fact that the Romans made a decree that anybody who was caught using the Tcheles at any point would be uh, put to death um, as it was uh, set aside only for royalty. So, as we explained, in order for us to maintain that the Murex snail is not the Chilaz and the Tcheles, we would have to presume that in, there were two types of, in the times of Chazal, there were two types of snails uh, that were incredibly similar, and yet um, in many different ways, and only one of them is kosher for Tcheles, namely the one we do not have is kosher for Tcheles, yet the one we do have is not kosher for Tcheles. So, I'm going to go through that in order. Um, we have to see that, we would have to assume that in the times of Chazal there are two types of snails that both ceased to be used at the same time in history. Both were found between Soma the Tzor and Haifa. Both were referred to by name as Parpura. Both produced strong dye that does not fade. Both were identical to Kala Elon. Both can be differentiated from the plant indigo, which is Kala Elon, only by the fact that the latter fades. Both needed to be extracted while alive. Both had dye contained in a sac separate from the animal's lifeblood. Both were expensive, both were widely used, and yet only one of them is extremely well documented with multitudes of shells and other artifacts that, which have been found, whereas the other, meaning the real Chilazan, the, the quote-unquote real Chilazan, has not left a trace. We have no simon of it at all. Only the one we do not have was valid for Tcheles, whereas the one we do have, namely the Mirik Shrunkeles, is not valid for Tcheles for some unknown reason. Chazal don't give any such reason. 
And despite all the similarities, Chazal never mentioned the twin that is invalid and never gave any way of differentiating between it and the valid variation as it did for Kali Elon. So we have to go to quite a stretch to assume that the Mirix Trunculus cannot be used for Trelas. Because there's so many similarities to everything Chazal and Torah sources tell us about the Chilazim for Trelas, and it matches up exactly with the Mirix Trunculus to a T. And yet, the only way we were able to say that it's not the right one is if, for whatever reason, there were two exactly similar types of snails that did not have, that one was kosher and one was not kosher without any way to identify it. Furthermore, the possibility of a twin is impossible, even if we were to say, on a, even if someone would say, okay, fine, I'm still not convinced. Maybe there was a twin. So we're going to tell them that there is no such possibility of a twin. Since we have already shown that the same trellis from the same source was used by everyone, Jews and non-Jews alike, and there never was a possibility of another type of blue fabric that was not either kosher or trellis or plant indigo. We mentioned, remember we mentioned the Gemara and Ervin, if someone finds trellis in the Shuk, etc., etc. So, to finish this off, um, we, we said over the Rambam, the mitzvah zu shnei tzivayis, there are two um, categories, there are two components of this mitzvah, um, there is, there is um, a uh, what's the name? There's a uh, there's two parts. There's a uh, part of treles and a part of lavan. And we brought Tysus as well. If someone can please mute themselves, thank you. Hold on. Excuse me. Also, we have Taisus in Bava Metzia that says if someone is, doesn't put Tcheles, someone's Tcheles Kali Elon on his big day. And Vaimer Tcheles who? The Ibrah Metzis Tzitzis. He's Ibrah on the Mitzvah of Tzitzis. That means one who has the Echeles to wear Tcheles and yet does not wear Tcheles on its Tzitzis. He rather puts something else or doesn't put anything at all would not be over, would not be Mekai in the Mitzvah of Tzitzis. So you could have a reality where people today are wearing Tzitzis and they're not being Mekai in the Mitzvah, which is a scary thought. And we have the Arugas Abaisen that says, Misha Minim, meaning he has access to both Lavan and Tcheles. He only wants to put on one min. Makin, I say, we hit him. Until his nefesh leaves him. Kidin Kolmitz is say. This is pretty pretty intense stuff, but this is from the Arugas Abaisen. So it says, The Lavosh Chayev Adam Lavosh Tcheles Vetzit Bchayim Im Yim If it's found, a person would have to wear it. And we also have the Beis HaLevi, Mishish, Le'treles, Umate, Lovin, Bovad, Over, Al Baltic, where he'll be over on Baltigra, which is an Isidoresa of, of uh, lessening a part of the mitzvah. This is also the Psak of the Sas Emes and the Mishnah of Ruro. So we see pretty clearly that if a person is going to uh, attempt to wear, uh, is, is, is someone's going to go through the Sugya and come out that the Mirak Shrunculus is in fact the ideal candidate for Treles, and yet he chooses to still not wear, he ends up with this pretty serious issue on his hands, which is that he's not over the, he's not in the midst of tzitzis. Rather, one would be better suited to not wear, uh, not wear tzitzis at all. Uh, in, in the case of where he's wearing a uh, mitzvah and he's ever bal tikra, and we saw a lot of shyness that we hit him until he, until, uh, he dies, these are, these are serious, serious um, shyness that uh, the Torah sources are using in this case. So, now that we did our, our uh, Chazara of last year, let's go through some of the main questions that have been, that have been, that are brought up against this test. Because right now it seems pretty clear, pretty straightforward that anybody who does uh, just a simple looking into this Sogya would be required to wear trellis. And yet, we find that to not be necessarily the case. Not uh, many people do wear trellis. So let's take some of the common questions that are asked on the trellis and see if there's any way to them. Maybe there's something to those questions that will give us a way out of wearing trellis. The first question. Is the Mesora required for the identification of the trellis? This seems pretty, uh, a pretty straightforward uh, question that many people seem to say, well, very nice, you could prove to me that, there's a, that maybe there was, a, there was a snail that was involved for dying, it was the Mirix Trunculus, it's this, it's that, but bottom line, we don't have a Mesorah, and since we don't have a Mesorah, so we can't use it. You can prove to me from today till tomorrow. There are those who say such a thing. So is this a taina that actually makes sense in halacha? Is this something that we find 
um, in Halacha. So <clears throat> the Rambam in Hilchos Kiddush HaChodesh, in dealing with the reality of trying to understand the astrology and the astronomy and the geometry regarding the different things of Kiddush HaChodesh, he writes as follows in Perak Yudzayin Halacha Chavdalat. He writes, V'tam kolela hachashbainis upnei um, one second, I just need to move this thing out of the way. And the Rambam says, no, 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 that all his ideas regarding Kiddush HaChodesh are in fact ideas <coughs> that are most notably Goyish ideas. Or not necessarily Goyish, but just uh, basic science. Not necessarily things that are found in Halacha, or in Jewish sources, and yet he's saying on them Halacha Lama And he writes, we're not, we're not concerned about who wrote them. If it's hard fact, if it's science, it doesn't make difference to us whether it was written by Goyim or by Nevi'im. He writes clearly, Nevertheless, since these concepts can be proven in an unshakable manner, leaving no room for question, the identity of the author, be of a prophet or a gentile, is of no concern. For a matter whose rationale has been revealed and has proven truthful in an unshakable manner, we do not rely on the personal authority of the individual who made these statements or taught these concepts, but on the proofs he presented and the reasons he made known. It seems clear that the Rambam is using this as a way to, to tell us that it doesn't matter where the ideas are coming from, meaning even without a Messiah, if we can use the facts on the ground to learn <coughs> and to understand, <coughs> excuse me, and to learn and to understand what we're talking about, we could then use that to paskin halacha lamaisa. And that's pretty, pretty intense that the Rambam is using such a thing. But let's see if he's the only one. Regarding the different birds that are either kosher or not kosher, um, we find that the Ramban and other Rishayinim use a uh, different simonim of the Gemara and the Mtsias and the anatomy of the birds to find it to determine which birds are considered kosher and which birds are not, which is, which is a fascinating thing. If you think about it, we're not, we're, they're not relying on any sort of Maseira. They're, they're very clearly stating that the reason why they're, they're being semich on these things are strictly due to the fact that they're using the anatomy and the clues that are found without a Messiah. It's not as, it's not as far-fetched as the Rambam is, but it's still, it's something that is noted that they're using the facts on the ground without a Messiah to determine halacha lamaisa, what is considered kosher and what is not. And this is very practical for what a person can eat. Regarding the shekel of the Torah, which has an afkamina lamaisa, of how much one has to give for pedina ben. The Ramban was kaveh es mishkoile al pi shekel al sed sherei kishi gil eretz yisrael when the Ramban came to eretz yisrael um, he took he, he someone gave him an actual shekel coin that was around from the bias this man bias and he weighed that and then he used that halacha lemaisa to determine but he didn't have a maseira yet the Ramban seems to not be concerned about that fact the Ramban is very clearly uh, stating that mitzias is mitzias we find another example of this. When it comes to the bracha, what bracha should one make on rice? Is orez rice or millet? And this is which bracha do which which uh, grain is made is made uh, do we make a bari mini mazainus or not? So the gra was kaveya that orez is rice just by looking into the mitzias. Yet he didn't rely on the Messiah. So he seen clearly that when a actual halachic issue has been missing and we can use the facts on the ground 
to learn and understand and to determine it, one would not be required to to uh, one would not be required to have a mesorah on this. This is what we see so far. Furthermore, the Maril seems to be concerned that the Tchilas would return without a Messiah. He writes, V'svarahu, the Shema Yachse Davalukokulai, Shaya Tchilas Motsui. Maybe that there's going to be, a, a, there's, a, if people are going to be able to tie, a, a, tie Kai and Betzitzis, we're afraid that the Tchilas might be found and people can end up having an issue with Tchilas. Kol Shekein, Lamaid the Kasav Smag, the Oisi Dachi Lazen Hu Bayam HaMelech. Yam HaMelech here is referring to the Mediterranean, not to the Dead Sea. And we find this in many cases where the Rabbanim of that time used Yam HaMelech to refer to the Mediterranean. The cost of Simonim, it would be easy to make Tchelis. But one second, shouldn't the Maral be concerned that there's no Meseira? Apparently the Maral is not concerned for that. We also find the Beis HaLevi, and I brought it inside the Sefer of Ein HaTchelis. He's quoted in the Ein HaTchelis by the Redzina Rebbe, who writes... And it's, and it's actually, this is one of the Beis HaLevi's tainas neged, the Redzina Tchilas, but he starts off with the following point. The, the Beis HaLevi is referring to the Redzina Rav, and he says, his greatness is not explained to us what he found. Is it a type of creature of a, that's, that's a fish, or a certain type of dye? After um, uh, his, uh, his honor would, would uh, be mevar this. And we were able to see that it's something that's found and, it, and it's here. We'd have a requirement to listen to him and to wear. So the Beis Halevi is saying clearly, I understand that uh, there are those who say that the Beis Halevi never said such a thing, but we see it clearly quoted in the Sefer. Um, and you can find the Sefer on Hebrew books. Um, it's in the Hakdama. When the Rebbe Salevi is quoted saying that... Sorry, it, sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. Uh, just touching on Yama Melech. Yama Melech mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily mean Mediterranean. It just means soul sea, because it's... That's what it is. That's so correct. Any, anybody else for it. That's correct, but it's also... We also know that the... Uh, that the that the uh, Mirak Shrunkless is only found in the Mediterranean in a specific area. So if he would be talking about any salt sea that wasn't that, and gen the general term in gen that we know today, uh, Yama Melech is referring to the, uh, to the Red Sea, I'm sorry, to the Dead Sea, um, and I'm just pointing that out, someone's going to say to me, oh, Yama Melech is obviously not the Mediterranean. No, it's found that the Yama Melech is necessarily referring to, not specifically the Mediterranean, but it's many times is referred to the Mediterranean in this case. Re yeah, but right, literally you're you correct. That there are authorities that refer to the Mediterranean as Yama Melech. What? I'm sorry, so I didn't in here clearly. Example. Which uh, which authorities refer to the Amalek Davka as the Mediterranean? Um, Davka as the Mediterranean? We we'll find many such cases. I'll send you a bunch of Marmachemists after it. Okay. <clears throat> so the Beis Alevi is saying here that if you can prove to us that this is the real deal we'd have a requirement to wear it not not to just like look into it required to actually wear it not just to listen to you but to wear it he then goes on and says but the fact is that we always had access to the cuttlefish and we always knew it existed and we always had ideas about it and we never used it so therefore it creates a negative messiah against the cuttlefish all the tainas that the Beis Levi had against the cuttlefish would not hold true against the Murex. But the point is that we're trying to bring from this Beis Levi is not only would the Beis Levi agree that we would have to wear uh, the Murex Shrunculus Tchelas just based on the fact that we can prove it as well as we did, but he's saying is that we don't need a Messairah. And this that people quote from the, from the, in the name of the Beis Levi that one needs Messairah, and if we don't have a Messairah we can't use it, seems to be fly in the face of this open Marmokam that we find here um, from the Redzina Rebbe. Bottom line, a Messira is not required to establish a halachic practice if it can be sufficiently proven by other means. Which means that since we can p sufficiently prove, as we proved last week and Chazar over this week, that the Mirak Shonkulis is a, is a valid candidate for the tchelis, one would, be, one would not have the problem, one would not be able to say that the lack of mesera is enough to knock that off. Okay. Question that people ask on the tchelis number two. 
Wasn't the Chilazin hidden away? Nignas. This is a question that we hear many times quoted from uh, Maron Reb Chaim Kanievsky, Shlita. Uh, when people ask him uh, if they should wear Tcheles, he, he replies that it's Nignas. So, is there, uh, uh, what is, what's this based on? Let's take a look. So there's a Safri in Devarim that tells us the following story. Amar Rav Yaisi, Pam Achas Ha'isi Mahalach Mechziv L'Tzor. I was once walking from Chziv to Tzor, Umatsasi Zakin Echad, and I found a certain Zakin. V'amarti Lai, and I said, and I asked him, Parnasa Chol B'ma, what is your Parnasa from? Amar Li, so he responded to me, Mechilazin, from the Chilazin. Amarti Lai, so I said, V'chimotzi Hu, is it found? Amar Li, so he responded to me, Hashemayim, a Lashon of Eshvua. There's a place in the sea that's surrounded by, by mountains. And there are like spiders that, that surround it. And there is no such person that goes there. That the spiders don't bite him. And he dies and he's left in the place. So I said, it must be clear, that this Chilazin was nignaz, was put in storage for the tzaddikim la'asid lovey. So it seems pretty clear, pretty open shot case, right? Tchelis is nignaz. So what we have obviously can't be correct, because it was nignaz. Furthermore, we have the Bamid Baraba that says, Mitzvah lahavi lovin v'tchelis v'yaseh, emosai, k'shehoye tchelis. V'achshav ein lanu ela lovin, sh'ha tchelis nignaz, nowadays that we only have lovin, because the tchelis was nignaz, mitzvah belovin. So it seems clearly that Tcheles is Nignas. So the first thing that's important to note once we understand the question is that if you remember the timeline that we showed last week, the timeline clearly shows that for almost a thousand years after this Gemara, the Amarim still had Tcheles. So that's one point that has to be clarified, what the Safri is talking about, because seems that there were treles already, we know, up to the Tkufas of Rabbanim Savroi, which is a good five, six hundred years after Chorban Bayes. So, no, I'm sorry, less, less than that, but uh, up to about five hundred years after Chorban Bayes. And the Tanaim were before Bayesheni. I mean, before uh, Chorban Bayesheni. So, this is an interesting Nakuda as to what's that, what's that talking about when we clearly know there are treles after the fact. Okay. But let's get into the answers that are provided here. There are basically two schools of thought to answer this question. The first uh, mahalach is, is what I would call the more practical mahalach, which mean, which shows and proves and, and tries to demonstrate that nignaz does not mean forever. Ganuz, or nignaz, which just means that it's put away for, a, for a, uh, a, an amount of time. It could be a short amount of time, it could be a long amount of time. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that just because it was nignaz doesn't mean it won't come out. This doesn't necessarily match up with the Safri that says Nignaz le Tzadikim Asid Lavei, which seems to be clear that it's only going to come La Asid Lavei, whatever La Asid Lavei is. But the first case that we have to fact to answer at least in Bamid Barabba, just that what we're answering from the Bamid Barabba was that he says Nignaz. Um, I hear you, Dov. It was meant to last, but how long can it last? We already know from the time of the Ga'inim they didn't have it. So it couldn't have lasted that long. So, meaning from the Tkufa of, from the Tkufa of, of that Gemara of Rabbi Yesi was the last time it was found, meaning up until Rabbi Yesi, bam. Until that point, nothing, nothing. I mean, Rabbi Yesi is the cutoff. And it seems to be Mashra from that Gemara that it was cut off from before. Um, and he was just talking about that that was where his, uh, you know, he was talking about his Parnassah was sort of dried up at that point. It could have been from a little bit before, but in a Hanami, the question then is how long should it have lasted? But I hear your point. Okay. Now, the, uh, getting back to the answer. So, the answer means that Ganesh just means that it's put away, but not necessarily lost the love. So, if we're answering up the Mamid Barabba that says, So, how would we, how would we explain that? So we find in many places throughout uh, throughout the Torah, we find that the word nignaz means shenishtakach. Uh, the Eitz Yisuf says that pirish nignaz, who shenishtakach, it just got forgotten um, or put away, as we're going to put in, we're going to see put in storage from other marmukim. So let's see. The Tanhuma and the Yalkut Shemani talks about that when 
חוף בי שונה שעושה יוסף במצרים חוץ מאוביב נגנז רוח הקודש מיעקב ובנוב. The Ruach HaKodesh from Yaakov and his children were put into storage, was Nignaz. Does that mean that Yaakov Avinu never had um, Ruach HaKodesh after that? We know for a fact he did. When he tried to, when he wanted to be Megal Kates, and then he lost it again. But there was a Tkufa while Yaakov Avinu was in Mitzrayim that he had access to this Ruach HaKodesh. So Nignaz doesn't mean forever, it just means a period of time, which it was. We also find in Bereish Rabbah, similarly, and in the Medjish Tanchumo, Yakivu Laim, Zepari, Shigonas Hatvu, Bish and Bishne Ravine, Vaya Brias Makalkan I say. That uh during the during the the part of the the seven years of famine, so you parry hid away all the all the different uh Tvuas and he kept it for himself. Avyasiv Zana Sailam Bishne Ravain, Kuroya, Haze, Shamana Egis Sainai. That like a like a shepherd that fe that that uh that takes care of his flock. So here we see also the word the word nignaz gonuz was meant to mean that it was just put into storage. We also find the pasuk in Shemais ves kol oedif hanichol lachem lemishmeres ad abayker. The extra they would put away in, in, in the mishmeres until biker and Rashi says lignaza put into storage. The Gemara of Sachem says Amar Rami Amar Rami Bar Rav Yuda Amar Rav miyom she nignaz sefer yochsin Rashi says she nishtakech sefer yochsin tashut koychin shachachamim v'cha amerinim. So we see also many different sources throughout the Midrashim and the Gemaras that seem to clearly say that Nignaz means a, f a form of putting in storage, and everybody will agree, not a single pro trelis or anti trelis person disagrees on this. Trelis was not accessible to Kalei for most of our time in Gullus. It just wasn't. So that can clearly mean what Nignaz is. I would explain it on this front. But we still have the problem of La'asid Labe. How do we explain that's a free? So the second Mahalach that we have is a sort of uh, a sort of a um, mystical Mahalach, if you will, and this is the answer given by Rabbi David Pardo, Nechaste David, and this is uh, this is the answer that I heard from my Rebbe, uh, Rabbi Gershon Meltzer, when he uh, to use to explain the Nignas thing. I believe he wrote a whole tshuva on it too, Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky, about this specific point, and he quotes this uh, this whole this the Rabbi David Pardo basically explains. That there seems to be many different different questions. Why is it constant jumping from from source to source? So he basically says, He explains that there were three there were three different types of of chilazin that were used for different uh, different types of chilas. Where he gets this from? Is is unclear, but the, it's found that the Arizal said such a thing. That there was uh, we also know the Arizal and the Zaya writes that uh, that the uh, Chilozin was found in the Kinneret. So unlike the Yavitz who takes the Zaya to task for this in uh, in Matpechet uh, Svarim, where he uses it as one of his main, one of his rias that the Zaya could not have been uh, written by Rishon by Yechai, uh, he writes this very clearly um, to say that look, there's a mistake in the in the Zayar. The Zayar says it was in the Kinneret. We know it clearly was from from uh, Ia Elisha and from Solon the Tzor Haifa. And he even I quoted him in the last in in last week's uh, in last week's class where he says that even the Seferi Uma Sa'ilam said that that's the only place where it could be. However, the Arizal has a different Malach and says that there were t multiple different types of Tchelas. There was uh, of Chilazin. I'm sorry. There was, and, and each type of chilaza made a different type of tchelas. There was a type of tchelas that was used for the big dikuhuna, the a second type of tchelas that is not clear what it was used for, and the third type of tchelas that was used for the tzaddik, uh, that was used for the, <coughs> the that was used for the, the big day, uh, begadma of tzitzis. And v'achar shekasafti said, derech svara zachisi matzasi barachi akivanim. I saw it in our kivunim and of the Ariza of Zalash Shaini. Tchelis yeshnei b'shalish b'chinas. There were three types of tchelis. B'nukva u b'dukkara u b'ema. Shela nukva he shall tzitzis. V'alav amru shadai meliyam. V'al azachar hu v'chulu. V'alav amru hayam dam anarkiya v'hu sayi la mishkan. V'yesh kam kein sayi tchelis me'er tzisar me'ema. There was a type that was that was so close to the color of the Kisei Kavli, and this was 
the the tchelis that was used for the big dekayin gadol, and that was the one that was gnuzim l'tzadikim l'aselavai. So we're not talking. So this sifri is talking about something very different. The sifri is talking about the tchelis, the the chilazin that made the tchelis of the big dekuna, which was found in the kinneret, and that was the one that was guarded by this by the by the spiders. And it was went out of went out of uh, it was hidden and put into Gniza until the tzaddikim of the Asad Lavai. However, the tchelis that was found years afterwards and still can be found today is uh, was the one that was used for tzitzis, and that is not the same one that was Nignas. And that's how my Rebbe Meltzer explained the way that tchela, that the Nignas is not a valid taina against the mere shrunkless tchelis. Furthermore, we have the Radvaz who is clearly concerned, we have not just our advice, we're going to bring a bunch of Marmachimists now, that people were clearly concerned of, of having the midst of Tcheles Bizmaninu, and none of them were concerned of Nignaz L'Tzadikim L'Aselobe. Let's see, their advice writes, V'Efshe Sha'at Ayayim Hu Matzli, Ele She'in Makir Naisei, Ay She'in Yoydin L'Tzadikim We, it's possible that we can even know what it is, we just don't, won't recognize it, we don't know how to catch it. So see, their advice is clearly concerned that we can technically find it, um, and he's not, it doesn't seem to think that it was Nignaz Lat Sadiqim La Salavi. Also the Maril, as we mentioned before, Vsvaru, the Shemi Yaksa Davalukukulai, Shia Tchilas Motsi, Kol Shekane, Lamai, the cost of Smag, the Isi Dak, he loves in Hubayama Melech, the cost of Simon, and Bikalu Las is Tchilas. So we'd be able to make Tchilas. But one second, I thought it was Nignaz Lat Sadiqim La Salavi. The Maril doesn't seem to be concerned about that. Furthermore, we know that the Rif and the Rush, when they wrote their Halachas for him on Shas, they only brought halachas that were in Egea Bismanein and during their times. And yet, both of them, both the Rif and Halachas Kitanis La Rif, Menachas, Halachas Sitzis Dafid Gimel, and the Rosh and Halachas Kitanis La Rosh, and Menachas Halachas Sitzis, they both bring Halachas Tchelas. Now, I understand the Rambam who brings Halachas Tchelas. Maybe he says that it's not, it's, it's not for now, it's Ganaz Lutzadikim Lasalavai, and the Rambam always brings the, the mitzvahs that, are, that weren't necessarily in Egea in his time. But in time, but the Rif and the Rosh clearly only bring the halachas that were negated to them at their time, and yet they bring mitzvahs tchelas. Clearly, they weren't concerned about it being nignas l'tzadikim l'asadlavi. The Elas Tamid says, "Afa gav the bezman azet leket tchelas mikomakim gazrinon vechein pir shabinu tamisham babraisa the sad in matzitzis the shema yiskal tchelas yaveli de yisuri de klaim." They're referring to the Gemaras that talk about that you can tie it for klaim matzitzis over there on daf lametes. And therefore, uh, even though Bezman Azad is no Tchelas, we are still Geyser, and therefore Rabbein Tam explains in the Bryce of the Son of the Tzitzit, Hashem Yizgal Tchelas, Be'avadei Yisri the Klaim. Also not concerned that it was Nignas Tzadikim Lala Sadlavi. Bottom line, the Sifri is difficult to understand and is almost certainly not relevant to the obligation to wear Tchelas in general. Certainly, we cannot use the words of this difficult Safri as a reason to avoid fulfilling a mitzvah der Isa. This doesn't mean that we're pushing off the Safri. We're being maker that the Safri is there, and the Safri says something that is very that is very hard to understand. Yet, just based on the fact that we have all these halachas farm and the Gemaras, and the fact that we can find that even though it was Nignas, it's there were always concerned for it coming back, seems to show us that we have to, if we can see that it can, that it came back already, and we can that we can prove with accuracy that this and the Mirik Shrankas is actually the Tcheles of, of old, we would be required to wear it. Question number three that people ask on the Tcheles, how can the Malacha of Tzad trapping apply to the Miriks? And this is a, this is a uh, question that was asked by Rizal Reisman, it's brought down in the, in, in the article in the Shvacha that they brought, um, and it seems to be based on a mistake in the Gemara. Let's take a look. The Gemara in Shabbos, Daf Ayin Hey, writes, Tanar Bonner, Hatzot Chilozay, Vapoitzay, Enechayev El Achas. It seems clearly that someone who catches a Chilozay on thing would be Chayev Achatos. However, the Gemara in Shabbos, Daf Kuvav, seems to show something differently. Tanar Bonner, Hatzot Tzvi, Suma, Vyoshan, Chayev. If you catch her a Tzvi that's blind or sleeping, one would be Chayev. But Chigar Vizakein, um, <coughs> If, it, if it's uh, feeble and old, v'chayla, or sick, potter. One would be potter for catching on Shabbos, for tzad on Shabbos, because it's not considered uh, uh, an actual catching. Tiny idach, hatzal chagavim b'sha'as atal potter. Someone who champs chagavim at the time of the dew is potter. 
because then it's considered an actual capture. So it would seem to, to, uh, to, to exclude a, a snail. A snail is a slow-moving creature. And therefore, being able to grab it in one shot would be very easy to do. So therefore, how could it be that the Miric Shrunculus, which is a snail, is able to be identified as the Chilazan? So this is making a, a, a simple mistake in the reading of the Gemara. The Gemara tells us clearly that what's considered Mechosur Tzida, that what's considered uh, the, the category, what is considered um, a way to understand what is, cons- what is Chai for Tzad on Shabbos is as follows. It needs to be something called Mechosur Tzida. It's, uh, it's elusive in its capture. Hechi Dami Mechosur Tzida, the Gemara wants to know. What's considered a case where something is elusive capture that if you were to capture it, on Shabbos, you'd be chay v'chatos. Amr Rav Yosef, Amr Rav Yehuda, Amr Shmuel, kol shamer haba mitzudai v'nitzedanu. Rashi explains what does that mean. Haba mitzudai kolimar, shetzarach levakish tachboilis l'tavsai. A person needs to plan in order to capture it. Meaning, if you try to capture a, you know, a fly on Shabbos, you need, to, you need to be able to, like, you know, try to, like, grab a cup and try to figure out how you're going to catch it. It's not something you can easily capture in one shot. But if... Uh, if you're looking for um, for other ways to, you know, other things are much easier to capture. If you have a, a, a domesticated cat, you know, you can just reach out and grab it, and it usually will stay if it's domesticated. So something like that would not be considered tzad on Shabbos. However, uh, something that requires thought and a plan in order to capture it would be considered uh, would be considered something that's that uh, tzida, and one would be require one would be chayv achadus if they would use it. The Shulchan Aruch says similarly, Shakol Chayev Oif, Shem Chosrim Tzida, Shetzar Chlaimer, Habam Mitzudev in Itzaydenu. Here he says clearly the requirement that Rashi says, Also the Tzaydun, Belitel of Name Azainis, it's also to capture them and put in front of them food. The Chol Shein Mechosrim Tzida, however, anything that is not lacking capture, Motor the Tzaydun, it's Motor to capture them, Belitel of Name Azainis. One could give them food on Shabbos. We're not, it's not over an Isidereisa. Pliny, when describing the, the way to capture, a, a Miric Shrunculus, he says clearly that they, there, was, there was definitely a, a plan that was needed in order to capture them. He describes it as follows. Purples, referring to the purpura, are taken with a kind of oizir kaip of small size and with large meshes. These are cast into the sea and in them cockles are, are put as a bait that close the shell in an instant and slap at an object just as we see mussels do. So one needed to use some sort of bait and, a, and baskets in order to capture them. <clears throat> we also find it in the ways that they would normally capture the Miric Shrunculus. Historic si- sources such as Aristotle and Pliny describe the method of catching Muricid gastrophods, namely H. Shrunculus and B. Brandis, using baited wicker baskets for sub- subsequent extraction of the purple dye. Presently, both H. Shrunculus and B. Brandis are commercially v- uh, valuable species in several Mediterranean countries. Traditionally fished for human consumption by using diverse types of artisanal fishing gears, either pots, basket traps, dredges, scoop nets, trawl nets, gill nets, and trammel nets. So, you see, when one has to capture it, one has to need to actually lay a trap for it and use baskets to it. It's not something that you could just go down and grab with one, with one hand. Here's a picture of the baskets they're using as they lift them up from the sea um, uh, to prove that point. We also have the Pasuk that tells us, It tells us about the Shemayin Shiratsim. What are they? Hachelet, Haachbar, Hatzav Lemineu, Vaanka, Vakoyach, Vaalta, Vahachoymet, Vantichoymes. Now we all know that Choymet is a snail. So one of the Shemayin Shiratzim that the Torah tells us is Choymet. Rashi explained is Limtza, as we saw it last week. The Mishnah in Shabbos says, Shemayin Shiratzim Ma'am Rabatera, Hatzav Lemachoyvo Bahem Chayev. Someone wants to catch them, is Chayev. So therefore, we see clearly that there's no way to say that one uh, capturing a snail is a problem on Shabbos is, is not a problem on Shabbos when it's clear in Pasig and a Mishnah that someone who captures a chaymet, a snail on Shabbos is chayev. Clearly that they're chayev to capture uh, a snail on Shabbos. We also find the Ben Yerucham that says, V'shara shirotsim k'gayin telas v'chal zunais v'akravim ha'tzad l'atzar echayim. So they're also chilazayin, chaymet, we keep seeing the same, the same yisayid, 
capturing them on Shabbos is considered a problem, and one would be required, one would be chayv achatos. So to say that just because they move slowly is enough to disqualify them from the chatos seems to fly in the face of the, this this uh, this Mishnah and the halacha. Bottom line, the malacha of tzida definitely applies to the murex, which was caught with specialized nets and baskets. And now we get to the money ball question, which everybody wants to know the answer, and there's never a really good answer for it. How can it be the right chelas if the gedeli soul don't wear it? And nobody here is, is denying that there are definitely G'dayli Yisrael that don't wear the Tcheles. Nobody's saying here, and we're also not here to be Mezalzal, any Talmud Chacham, Chas V'chalila. But this question by, by, by itself is not a fair question. Um, because there are many Rabbanim that do wear it. Many Rabbanim that would be considered G'daylim that wear it. And we'll be able to demonstrate just a few of them. And I have to thank Rafi uh, for putting together a terrific list on his website, which I sort of copied and pasted. Um, but before then, just because people don't do something doesn't mean they don't, they don't hold of it. Um, and maybe there are other reasons behind why they're doing what they're doing. And that doesn't mean one shouldn't ask them. One should ask them. There are also, clearly, that there are G'dayli Yisrael, such as Rav Shmuel Kamenetsky, and Rav Moshe Heinemann, and Rav David Kohn, all big Paiskim in their own right, who say clearly that even though they personally don't see that the Mirik Shrunculus is kosher for Tcheles, they have no problem with anybody wearing it. They think if a person is convinced that they, they would wear it, they would have to wear it. So let's first go through a, a quick list. But in general, I want to I want to put in front of you that just because it's never a good idea to to base something solely on the actions of certain individuals. Um, we 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 are we are an Amanifcha. The Torah belongs to all of us. Torah is it's, by, uh, it's accessible to all Yidin, and anybody can learn a sugya and learn it up. Now, it doesn't mean one should immediately change their life by doing so. One should definitely have a Rebbe who they discuss things with and uh, make sure that they're not making mistakes in the way they pass in. But uh, as, uh, as Berkowitz says many times, um, a person who goes through a sugya and is convinced on the outcome that that's the halacha, that's the way he's supposed to follow it. Um, the way we have the Mishabur is for the people who for people who don't go through this sugya, I've heard that from him many times. So uh, he was—he doesn't mean it like that. To be clear, to be clear, he's not saying just uh, you learn the sugya, ignore the Mishnah Bura. It's not what he's saying. He's saying is that a person needs to uh, a person needs to learn through a sugya, and a person goes through a sugya and learns all the different shitas on on either side, and he's someone who is who is uh, a person who is able to learn halacha and to and has demonstrated he's able to learn it in a yasher and clear way. He talks things over with his rabbi, make sure he's not making mistakes and the like. And it comes out that clearly this is the way the sugya should be. When he is required to follow his psak in any area of halacha, it's not specific to tcheles. As I mentioned, there are many different rabbanim who wear tcheles. We have Rabelski, who's known to say that it was vaday, that the tcheles, uh, that he held that the mirk shrunkless is vaday tcheles. Um, and uh, um, here we have, if you can zoom in, uh, potentially I can zoom in over here, you can see. Not so clear over here, but you can actually see that this uh, string over here is uh, is uh, what's the name? Is blue? It's not so clear. Um, on the actual picture, it's clear. Uh, you can see a zoomed up uh, version on the picture on the on the on uh, Rafi's website. You also have Rabbi Shimei Margenstern, who wears Zalman Chemi Goldberg, wears all big place skin. We know Rabbi Scheinberg wore. Now again, that's not necessarily right that he held that it was any just. Um, he wore all the Vashitas. So I'm not saying that you can bring a raya from any of these pictures that they held that this was something that everybody should do either. We're just noting that there are many who went through the sugya and either felt a suffix or held, uh, felt vade that one should be wearing it. Rapsroy Dublinsky, Talmud al Chazanish wore. We also have Herschel Shachter, uh, who wears the Rashiva of, of uh, Rini Tzchokhanon, Rabbi Mordechai Katz, uh, Dayan, um, Rameir Mazuz. Who wears a Kiva Sofer, the Darela Rav? We also have Rav Leo Ben Chaim, who wears a Dov Dior Shlita, who wears a Geshe Meltzer Shlita, a Meshe Tenle Shlita, a Shlame Gissen Trizatzal, a Shlame Machbud, a Velio Avachvog Shlita, a Meshe Marker Karp Shlita, a Ramon Offen Shlita. And this is just a small list. There are many more that we have that wear. So to say that all the Gedele Yisrael, bar none, have come out and said that, uh, that, it, that it's not the right Tcheles. That is, is, in, is, not, is not correct. There are many people who, who have gone through this again and hold that it is the tcheles. Again, this is, there, none of these people necessarily came out and said everybody should be wearing tcheles. Some of them have, some of them haven't. And also from the Rabbanim that, that, that say not to wear or don't wear tcheles, 
Not all of them are, have gone through the sugya or are knowledgeable enough to say that they hold one way or the other. Of course, there are, there are those who have, namely Rav Kaganov Shlita from uh, Be'akor, I believe, um, and uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Rav Shmuel Kamenetsky, Rav uh, Dovah there, there, there are big minds, great minds on either side of this debate. This is why it's never, it's never a good thing to prove anything from Rishimas. They're never, they're never a good idea. We go through the sugya. If you go through the sugya and you see the sugya, and you have a rebbe, as I mentioned, and you go through and you ask the shaila, make sure that he's he's you know you're not making mistakes in the way you learned it up, and what you personally should be doing, and that's that's the question that you can go through for yourself. Here, this is a part of a video. Obviously, we're having issues with the internet, um, so I couldn't play the video. But uh, this is a the video you can find online and YouTube. It's a it's a of Yecheska Tabarovich who asked Reb Chaim Kanievsky about the Tcheles, and after he went through all the different proofs, Reb Chaim told him, okay, Zayt Gesund, you, you're mechayiv to wear. Um, so, correct, fa- it was actually his father, Reb, Rabbi Amichai Haparavich. Sorry, Amichai? It says Rabbi Amichai, it's uh, Rabbi Cheska's okay. father. All right, thank you for the correction. Rabbi Amichai Haparavich, who, who went to ask Reb Chaim, and then Reb Chaim, uh, uh, so, <laughs> he, Reb Chaim told, uh, told Reb Haparavich to be might see him. So it's clear that Reb Chaim held, that Reb Chaim holds for whatever reason that one should not be wearing tchelas. He said it many times. He usually uses the nigna as taino, um, but here he is telling someone who went through the sugya that you hold that it's the right tchelas. You're mechayiv to wear, and it's an important nukuda. Nobody, uh, people get upset when you bring this marmakim, this this video. Oh, you see, Reb Chaim said to wear tchelas. No, he told the person who went through the sugya that if you went through the sugya and you came out. Amiti, Torah's emes. You came through Amiti. That it's the that it's the proper tchelis, and you should be wearing tchelis. Okay. So to recap all that we've come up with so far, we went through the fact that the Mirak Shrunkulis is is ninety nine point nine percent the candidate of the tchelis from from Chazal. We went through the fact that one is mechayiv to wear it if he has access to it. We went through all the uh, some of the questions that are asked on the Mirak Shrunkulis. And uh, namely Maser, Nignaz, and Tzad, and we answer them hopefully satisfactory. So now we're left with the, the most important question of all, which is now that we are required to wear Tchelis, how many strings of Tchelis should one wear? Well, it's a three way machlekes. There's the sheet of the Rambam, who holds that one, uh, that half a string of the four strings, which means when they're, once they're folded over in the baggage over here, they're folded over here, it would mean that there would be seven white strings and one blue string. You have Shita of the, ra- the Ravid who holds that there needs to be one complete blue string, which means when folded over you would have two blue and six white. And then you have Shita of Taisvis which holds that there needs to be two and two, which means that when they're folded over you have four stri- white strings and four blue strings. Let's go through each one one by one. The Rambam says it clearly. This is the Rambam in Hilchus Tzitzis, Parak Aleph, Halach Avav. We have the Ravid on Rabbi Avram ben David, who who writes, who argues on the Ra- the Rambam over there, and he says as follows: You need to have two that are tchelas and six that are levainim, which means that you have one complete or one full string of of tchelas. And then you have Shittas Taisus, which holds that you have Mitzvah Lassa is Beis Chutim Tchelis, Beis Chutim Lavan, folded over, that would be four and four. This is Taisus Menachas, Tavlam Ches, Derem Aschal HaTchelis. So we went through the three different Shittas. Now, um, Rabbi Sol Barkin has a whole country basically proving beyond the shadow of a doubt in mainstream halachic circles as to why um, B'nai Ashkenaz and potentially even B'nai Sfard should be wearing the, the, the Taisus the Taisus. Um, um, uh, everybody should be wearing according to Shitas Tosos. Um, before we get into that, we're going to explain why actually the Rambam and the Ravid seem to have the Pashib Shah of the Psukim. The Pasuk tells us, Venasinu al Tzitzis Hakonov Psil Techelas. Psil would seem that on one of the Corners of the of the strings would be uh, would be Techelas. So that can either match up very clearly according to the Rambam or the Ravid. Now, I know Rafi mentioned last week, uh, a little bit hard to understand how the Ravid, how Rambam would work with buying, finding uh, Lashonis in the Shuk, 
if uh, it should be very clearly identified if you can find one that's half white and half blue. Um, but we can, well, putting that aside for a second, either the Rambam or the Ravid seems to be uh, very, uh, seems to match up much more with the Pesukim. So where does Tesis come from? Where does Tesis understand that one should wear two strings of white, of, of white and two strings of blue? So we're gonna go, we're gonna go through many different times where Tesis says it, and we're gonna see that Rav Yishinim seem to go with it. His makar is that it says Gedilim Taselcha. Um, which is the other pasuk uh, referring to tzitzis and gedil, the, the drasha that they make is gedil is shtayim and gedilim is arba, which means that there should be gedilim tasalach, which means that gedil gedil would mean equal amounts of both of, of both lavan and tchelis. Well, in Taisus and brachas, he says kabbalat tchelis v'gam shnei lavan. There he says it clearly um, that there's two and two. In Yuvamis, he says, And before, I know I'm going through this quickly, so if anybody wants access to this uh, PDF, they can find this on trelis.org under the pamphlet section. There's a, a, this whole thing was put together by Rabbi Sol Barkin um, uh, on, this, on this topic. And Taisis and Ksubis writes, Now, we also, it's important to point out that the Taisis are not uh, are not uh, the Taisvis is not one person. It's a, it's multiple people. It's multiple Bali Taisvis. And so this is a it seems to be a consensus among all the Bali Taisvis that this is the shita that, that one should wear. Rashi Menachas Tavlam Ches says Va'afal Gav the Mitzvah Losis Tcheles Beis Chutin. See Rashi also seems to hold that way. Taisvis and Menachas in the same place, right? Mitzvah Losis Beis Chutin Tcheles or Beis Chutin Lavan. The Gedil Shnayim Gedil Arba. The Rashin and Mini Shnaim love and Mishnaim Trelis. Taisis Menachah says the Achshav Shenais of Dal Chutim Bey is Misham Love and Bey is Misham Trelis. And Taisis and Baraham Bechiris says Dal Chutim Shal Trelis Ve'Arber Shal Love. So we see it's clear that Taisis holds that it's two and two. But it's also clear that Rav Rishonim seem to go with that Yisait as well. Taisis Arash says the same. Taisis Rabbeinu Peretz, the Chachmei Ashkenaz, the Tsarfas, Rabbeinu Miyuchas. Rosh, the Shaila Sachuvas Rosh, the Shitim Kubetzes, the Taisa Rash Mishans, the, the, the Rid, Rivavon, Rajba, the Rimei Lunil, Rabbein Yeruchim, the Rav Yah, the Ravid on, uh, the Pirish Ravid on the Sifri, I don't believe that's the same Rav Ram Ben and David, it could be the, uh, the Rashav Bezdin of somebody, but uh, there is someone named Ravid that's, that seems to say the same as Taisus. And just in case, and it's not clear, I'm going to zoom in so you can see it with your own eyes. He says, Pretty clear. Um, continuing alongside this, we have the Mordechai, the Smak, the Meram Miratenberg, the Sefi Yireim, the Sefer Eshkol, the Bala Itter, the Rishmi, and Pira, the Aryakar, Megala Mukis, and the Malbim, the Halacha, Svarim also seem to go with Taisus, the Tor. The Taz, the Machsas Shekel, the Bi'er Agra says clearly that it should be two and two, even though the Gra says uh, elsewhere that it should be like the, like the Ravid. The Griz, the Shochan Acharav, and the Rav Tzvi Spitzer. These are all examples of many, many, many Paiskim, both Rishayinim and Achreinim, who seem to go Halachal Maisa like Taisus. Not only that, the Mishdebura. One second, please. Mm-hmm. One second, please. Let's just finish this up, and then I'll take questions. The Mishabura seems to pass in this way as well. He writes in Simon Tess, Siv Kotin Zayin, the Bisman Shai Yitzchelas Shai Yitzarach Lahat Del Dal Achutin Shnei Chute Lavon Shnei Chute Yitzchelas. Also in Simon Yud Aleph, Siv Kotin and Ches, he writes Bisman Shai Yitzchelas Hay Oisin Beis Mitzchelas or Beis Milavon. And the Mishabura in Simon Yud Beis says the Shnei Chute Im Shahein Dalid Ainu Nois Nim B'Makom Tchelas the Shnei Chute Shahein Dalid Anu Nois Nim B'Makom Lavon. So it seems to clear the Mishabura is going like she does Taisus that that there needs to be two and two when we're when discussing when discussing the amount of uh, trellis one would need to wear, should we have access to trellis? Now, why does this matter? Well, the Beis Yosef in Akdama, uh, and this is why I said... Thing? No? Yes. The, the guys are Rishonim, so um, I think uh, Rabbi Yitzhak Grand lists, uh, has lists of the Rishonim. I think there are 25 or 23 to 25 Rishonim who say like Tosvos. There are 18 Rishonim who say like the Ravid, so it's not, it's not exactly... Uh, uh, a small minority who say like the rivals. Eighteen Rishonim also say like the rivals. 
Okay. But it seems to be clear that it is the Rav. And again, this is a, I'm not here to tell you what, which way you have to wear and which way you have to wear. I'm quoting from, as I mentioned, Rav Barkin's uh, um, um, on the on the topic. This is the Mahalat that I have from my Rebbe. Um, and it seems to be clear based on what it is, but I, I'm open to hear arguments for, for Rivet as well. As a matter of fact, I prefer to hear arguments for Rivet Rambam because it's definitely cheaper. <laughs> but um, we have to do what is Yashar and Bene Hashem, and if a person is convinced that this is the right Mahalach to go, then one has to wear as we learn. We can't take shortcuts when it comes to Halacha, but I appreciate the point that you brought out that yes, it's not as clear cut as we may have been making it out to be right now. Point being taken. Um, yes. So where, uh, where does he write that? You can find it in that in the pamphlet. Um, but if you want, I can go back and we can look it up. Um, where is it? I think it's over here. Megala Mukas. We can zoom in over here. In Parsha Shalach, he writes. It's a little bit hard to read. Love the Vesay. Dal et Chutim Beish Alavin u Beish Al Tchelas. What I find interesting is that Megali Amukos was a big Mekubal, and he also held uh, two and two. And it's very important because a lot, because a lot of people, a lot of Mekubal that by the Zoyer say it's got to be like Rambam ratio. Okay. To be fair, to be fair, yeah. To be fair, there are those such as Abdov Lior um, and others who hold that that since there is no true Messiah, and a lot of these are just quoting. Misvara from Mesogio. Therefore, one should wear like the Rambam. Um, there are those who say that. There's also all the Zilbermans who wear clearly like the Goyen, who says like the Ravid. Um So, we're not here to tell anybody that if you see someone wearing Rambam or Ravid Sitzes, that you should tell them, oh my goodness, take it off right away. Um, you know, the, take it off right away and, and, and put on Tesla strings. But it seems to me that if someone is new to the Sugya and doesn't necessarily, it's not part of either. Uh, either group of of wearing that way, and just by the normative halachic standards that, that we have, uh, by following the the, the psak of the Mishnah Bura, and to go through even beforehand the base yeses I'm trying to bring from here in the Akdama where he says that we're one uh, when and generally the base yeses paskins like the three big uh, paiskim, which are namely the Rif, the Rambam, and the Rosh. In a case well, where in this case the base yeses. The Beis Yosef had the wrong gears on the rivet, so that's, uh, you can't really... Again, again, this, the Beis Yosef here is not writing, this part, this thing of the Beis Yosef is not talking about the, is not talking about Tcheles at all. He's talking here in general, a general term. Now, the, the Beis Yosef many times doesn't follow his own rule. I get it. And maybe in this case we should be wearing like the rivet. I'm opening to hear, well, I'm open to hear the arguments for that. But I'm right now talking in normative halachic circles. Um, it's clear that we have a large number of Rishayim that go with Teisvis. We also have um, the Mishabru Apostles that way, but before then, when in general speaking, in halachic terms, when Beis Yisrael has a machlekes, two against one, let's say name the Rif and the Raman versus the Rush, he will pass in like the Roiv of those three. What happens when one of them doesn't say their opinion. So let's say, for example, the Rift doesn't say his opinion, but the Rambam says one opinion, and the Rosh has a different opinion. The Beis Yisra says in that case where one of them doesn't mention his opinion and the other two say uh, differing opinions, we go basar roiv. And since we have clearly demonstrated, even though it may not be a large roiv, but it still is a roiv, the it seemed that the Beis Yisra, if were he to give an opinion on it, would potentially pass in like Tesis as well. The Ramah takes it a step further and he writes, This is also the Ramah of the Akdama. So it's clear that there are more Hapaskin like Tesis, no question, uh, uh, no question at all. And the Chazanish also writes here, just as this is a fun tidbit, not necessarily a proof of anything, but he writes, Again, hyperbole, but still, 
uh, it's still, he's, the Chazanish is trying to emphasize the point that we definitely go, we take the opinion of the Mishabrua very, very important, uh, very, very seriously. As such, based on all this, one should wear like Taisvish strings, and this is the way my Rabbi Paskin's clear, uh, my Rabbi Paskin, um, or Geshe Meltzer Paskin, that one should be wearing like Taisvish. Um, the Ramah says this openly in Dark Yemesha, on the, on the place of Hilchasitzis, Nira lifsai kedivrei ha-taisis, me'echa sh'rabeinu v'apaiskim ha-chorinim, hesmichu imoim, v'ka'arachti v'zeh b'akdamasi. I said clearly, like I already said like this in the Akdama, that one needs to, one needs to uh, 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 um, follow the Shittas Taisis here. So Ash, B'nai Ashkenazim should, uh, should necessarily follow, should, uh, at least if you're going within the normative halachic circles, should be wearing like t- Shittas Taisis. Okay, any questions on them before we get into the, the way the different ways to tie it? Just one just one random question. Uh Ragosh Gershel Melser, you said he holds like he holds like ties, but I'm curious, how does he tie like? So he ties like the grub, but I'm going to get into that in uh in, uh, in at length when we go through the different sheetas. Okay. Anybody else? Also the the fear I've it, um toast is kasha mm-hmm. anyway, so so to be safe. I'm saying toast is kasha like you call sheetas, no? No, because if one has extra, then he's being a uh, Baal That's Baal on the sh- white, either way. Yeah, right. Then it'll be Baal on the white. So either way you, you go, you're... That's you're correct. Best. Okay, Rabbi David, I, didn't, I, I hope I wasn't... I wasn't, uh, I wasn't chutzpah dick, right? right? I was just trying to very clearly... No, no, do, no I, 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 I understand. I don't okay. worry about it. Terrific. Okay. So... As we can clearly see, uh, this beautiful graphic that we have over here, thank you to the Psil Tcheles website um, for putting this together, um, which is a great website, for example, and if you are unsure how to find it, just go on to Rafi's website, I'm, I will I'll redirect you direct to their website, um, that there are many different imaginative ways of how to, uh, the seem at least, uh, how to tie Tcheles. And uh, what happened to our plain old 7, 8, 11, 13 method? What's with that? It seems like... And uh, website getting updated every day. So now there's yeah, like well, 30 methods. It's just I know. <laughs> so the purpose of this is not to go through every single method because Baruch Hashem, Kali Yisrael is, is blessed with many people who are quite talented in, uh, in, uh, in their imagination and not just in their imagination but in their, in their efforts to be Mekayim, the different uh, ways of understanding the Gemara and therefore we have many different ways that people have come up with how to tie and how to, you know, to be Mekayim this and as someone who sells Tcheles um, I can definitely uh, report to you the, 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 the different requests that I get are quite interesting on uh, how, how long I want this to be this long and that to be that long as I'm tying it like this and we end up with all sorts of fun conversations. Um, but let's go through some of the main, uh, the main uh, Gemaras and, and Makairis on how to tie the different Chulias. What is, what is considered a Chulia? What is considered a Kshira? And then we could potentially understand why there are different the different the different sheets in the machlekes, and hopefully that will en- enlighten one as to what is uh, the preferred way of tying. But to be completely open and honest and upfront, uh, my Rebbe of Gersh Meltzer has said clearly that none of this is ma'akiv midiraisa. Just the two kshiris and the first three windings are the diraisa, and everything else is extra credit. So you can tie it any way you'd like. He personally ties like the gra because he said I wanted to. He wanted to tie what was considered the minig of the place where he lived, and since most people that wear uh, wear trelis in, in Yerushalayim um, wear like uh, are the zilbermans and they wear like the gayin, um, even though he was wearing two strings as opposed to th- as opposed to one, um, he decided to tie his chalias like the gayin. That was his reasoning behind it. What's interesting so, is, that the, is that the gayin called the sefri. Um, that talks about Shnei Tzchuti Lavan and Shnei Tzchuti Tchilas into question. So it's almost like right. it's almost like you're mixing and matching when you're doing the grow with uh, with uh, with Tzitzis ratio. Yeah. I mean, it's not Mayaki, it's just one of the most fascinating things. Mm-hmm. All right. So this is actually a, a pair that I tied, just a, sh- uh, a shameless self-promotion here um, on the screen. 
But let's take a look at the Gemara. So the Gemara is in Menachas, Taf Lamed Tesman Aleph, and Lamed Chesam Beis Lamed Tesman Aleph deal with the amount of strings that need to be used and how to tie them. The Kamashir Chulia, what is considered a Chulia? Tanya, Rabbi Omer, Kedei, Sheyichrech V'yishna V'yishlish. They should tie it around and tie it a second time around and tie it a third time around. So it seems that there needs to be three wines. Tana, but the fact the Gemara, we have a we have a price that says Apoiches, Leipaches Misheva. Someone who starts shouldn't do less than seven. And someone who does more shouldn't do more than 13. So what are we talking about? We're talking about three, seven, or 13. The six spaces between the seven rakias. So it should be between seven and 13. But between seven and 13, what? Strings? But we just said that there should be three strings. So is the minimum shir of th- of three? But it seems like the Gemara is saying that there needs to be seven or 13. Which one is it? Um, so before we answer that question, let's read the next Gemara. Tano, kishuhu maschil. When someone starts tying it, maschil beloven, he starts with the white string, hakonof, because it says hakonof, min kanof, from the, from the, the, the min of the bag, right? Just as the bag is white, so you should use the white string. Or... Uh, according to some, if you wear an orange, uh, there's a there's a kid in the old city who wears an orange uh, orange tzitzis, and he has uh, orange strings and blue strings. Interesting fellow, but uh, that's he does. He says, "I kind of min kind of." Luchshu mesayim mesayim below, and when one finishes, he should use the eleven strings. Malin bekaidish vile meridin. So the Gemara seems clearly that the first and last needs to be lavan. So is that talking about the first and last string, the first and last cholia? Good question. What about, let's take a look at the, uh, some more Gemara. So Gemara Menachas Taf Lamed Ches says, Amar Ravo, Shema Mina, Tzarech Likshar Akol Cholio V'Cholio. There needs to be a Kshira on each Cholio. Okay, so there needs to be a Nat. V'Amar Ravo, Shema Mina, Kesher Oyen Deres. The first Kesher is Deres. So Machle, Rashi's not sure if that's talking about the last Kesher, meaning the one right over here that you see on your screen, right before uh, the one, the, the string split, or it means the first one, the one closest to the baguette. Mejistan Chuma says, Tzitzis Sheishmeis, Tzitzis is Gematria 600, Shmoin Achutim, you have 8 Chutim, which is 608, Vachamish Ksherim, and 5 knots, Hare Sheishmeis, which I say, equals to 613, connecting the 613 mitzvahs. Now it's important to note, uh, to point out this Mejistan Chuma. What is this Mejistan Chuma trying to teach us here? This Mejistan Chuma is trying to, is talking about it at a time where there was no Tcheles. And we have a pasuk that says, mm-hmm. You look at the tzitzes and you remember all the mitzvahs. Now, bizman tcheles, it was very easy to do, as we quoted the Gemara and Chulin. Right? Tcheles damel yam, v'yam damel rekia, right? V'yam rekia damel yam v'sapir, I'm sorry, v'yam damel shemayim, v'shemayim l'rekia, right? V'chulu. Until he said, come, a person sees his, his tcheles strings and he immediately remembers the mitzvahs. This chatim is common to Hashem. But at a time where there were only love on, what, would, what was there to remind you? So we started, the Midrashim started using, uh, you know, Gematrius, 613. You have, you have, uh, Tzitzis itself is, six, is uh, 600, and you have eight strings and five knots. Therefore, you have 613. But it's important to note that the fact that we need to have five knots on our Tzitzis is Lav Dafka, a Deresa thing, and it's definitely not necessarily found in the Gemara. We find that there needs to be Kshiras on Kol, on Kol Chol Yivachol But what's considered a Kshira? Is that a double knot? like Rabbi Tam seems to hold? Or is it just looping the string in between it, like the Ramam seems to hold? It's an interesting Nakuda. Going back to that Gemara that we quoted before, right, what is the Shir Cholya? So the, there are those who explain that a Cholya is, th- is a winding of three strings, um, and there needs to be a groups of three strings that are either, th- there are either seven groups of three strings, or 13, or 13 groups of three strings, or somewhere in between those, um, as the Gemara says. And that would explain um, certain, certain shittas that we're going we're gonna to go to more in depth in a minute, but uh, that's how they understand the Gemara. Others understand that, no, it, it means that they're, that bottom line of Cholia is, is, is three, but really, it shouldn't be less than seven or 13. When you have people who tie seven, eight, 11, 13, that's what they're going for. The seven, uh, eight, 11, 13, with five kshiras, that's how uh, when people only have love and they tie that way. 
And also, as we mentioned, that you need to start with Lavan and end with Lavan. So you'll see in all the different shittas, they always start with Lavan, but it's unclear if they start with three strings of Lavan or one string of Lavan and one string of Lavan at the end or three strings of Lavan at the end. So let's go through some of the shittas. We have Rabbeinu Tam. Rabbeinu Tam explains, Lefisha tcheles de meliyam v'yam de'olakia. V'anan de les lan tcheles, like Kaptin and Baha. We who do not have tcheles are not... Captain, uh, we're not mocking on this. V'ha nami damrin and sarach likshar kol chulia v'chulia. Hainu kadeshi and nicker hatcheles. The reason why there needs to be a kshira on each chulia is that we should be able to see the tcheles. Masha nunoyim chamishik kshirim piers bekuntres gavet tzitzis shakula kenegik kol mitzvus lefisha tzitzis oila tafresh v'ches chutim v'chamishik kshirim oila tariyak umiu kol tzitzis amurus b'parsha chasirim yud. Any time it says tzitzis in the Torah, it's missing a yud. V'yesh lemer sheyesh pasuk v'hayu lachem l'tzitzis v'gimel tzitzis k'suvim b'parsha v'lam etzu m'shel l'mason v'chein noyeg in Rabbeinu Tam last is listen hey k'shirim v'yiz b'samach l'talis v'gimel samach l'psil u'mishom ma'alim b'kodesh v'lim aridin k'damrin and shemesayim b'lavan v'al kol kesher shnei k'sharim k'day sheyye k'shak shal k'ayama we don't find any sort of, as I mentioned before, anywhere in Shas it says one has to have not five knots. Like we see here in this picture, three of Lavon, three of Tcheles, two knots, right? Um, Here's uh, Kshira number one. Um, the seventh Chulia of Lavon. And there are those who hold there needs to be seven uh, strings between each Kesher and Kesher, but that seems to be the sheet of Rabbeinu Tam, which would be the bare bones basics of our understanding. You have a, you have a Kshira, you have blue, white, Kshira, blue, white, I'm sorry, white, blue, Kshira, white, blue, Kshira, and then finishing off with, with white and a Kshira, that leaves you five Kshiras, and you have seven Cholias, a group of three strings. Okay. We have the Sefer HaChinuch, who takes the same Yisait of Cholius being grouped, but he wants, but he has, ends up with 13, and he has only four sets of knots. One, two, three, I'm sorry, also five knots. One, two, three, four, five knots. Ketzer Eisen HaTzitzis, Ma'avir Ne'ar Bechutim Meknaf HaBeged, Sheim Shmoina, Rosh Echutim, yeah, you have eight heads of the, of the strings, Kishem Tulim Meknaf, the Ein Teil Eisen Samach Mamish, Lisvas HaBeged, Volei Rochik, you shouldn't tie them, like, very, very tight to the Begad, but or loose, it's just somewhere in between. Alasama Kishir Goidom Mirashe, Ala Perak Rishain, Kedam Rabbi Yaakov, Am Rabbi Yechon, and Begmaro, with Sarah Lahaki Kimale Keshe Godel, for Isa Echod Mehem Godel, Kedesh Yechach Menachem, the Kaishran, the Hamisha Mikoimis Kesher Kafel. Ubein kesher v'kesher oisa sholish cholius. There needs to be three cholius between each one. Ubein tzolius a kesher in between the middle things. There needs to be. Um, so you have three, 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 and then four. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and then you have the knots spaced as as before. And that's how you have thirteen cholies. You have the gra shita, which is to do um, four, four. Four, and then one, which is thirteen, and then one, two, three, four, five knots, as well. So the Gra has va'amar chayk sharim mikan da'afi yugam acholia and rakhek sharim v'hu bez v'hu bedalat cholin kasher echad v'zayis kasher ha'acharin v'hu shema diyud bez b'cholin gimel pamim dal dal b'chiyus b'shvatim b'tkufus b'chiyetsa b'chiyetsa v'chein b'chol kesher b'chrichos v'zeshikasa v'apoiches beis cholias b'chol kesher lava nutchelas v'mashikasa v'tzarich likshar al v'chol lohaynu b'apoiches al v'tzarich lasis nachatchila kam moisiv k'mashikasa v'kan v'koy achulias v'le achrichos k'pirish rishin shabataisvus. So the Goyin is also working within the framework of Taisvus's understanding as well. However. We have the Rambam. The Rambam dis uh, disagrees with that understanding, and the Rambam holds that a kshira on each cholia 
means that you just loop the string underneath the strings itself and you tie the groups of three strings to itself which is why you have over here this is the same exact tying method just one is seven and one is thirteen and you can see there's an extra line that goes through it here that's basically wrapping around itself and then through and the first and last one is Lovan to match the Gemara and he writes as follows in Hilchah Sitzis Perak Alpha Lach Avav I'm sorry it's Halacha Zayin and Halacha Ches I made a typo there so here you have the first one. One white, two, two blue, and you tie it, meaning you tie it within itself. Those three, three uh, strings are called a cholia. You make a simple space between them so you can see the difference between the... the Blue and the and the and the I'm sorry the the treles. it needs to have a rechuk as we mentioned before. You just do it with with treles. That's what you should do for all conferences. And the only difference is whether you do seven or thirteen. Different people do different things. But as you notice, the Rambam doesn't do any kshiras. As we mentioned from the from before, that there's no smach to do necessarily do kshiras from the Gemara. The Benish Chai, in order to to add in those kshiras, does basically the Mahalach of the Rambam, just adding those five kshiras here. I'm not going to read it inside, but it's pretty straightforward. He's doing the same exact Mahalach of the Rambam of tying it within itself, but doing but sporadically spacing out kshiras. They have one, two, three, four, and five kshiras. The Ravid brings from a Tura Gai. That he that they that they should be equal amounts of of chulias. So there he holds that the chulias need to be seven, um, and he spaces them with five kshiras. And instead of having all the chulias as as blue, which just with the exception of the first and last one, he does seven 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 of of uh, uh, do, using three of blue and four of white. So that we have the first and the last one um, doubled up, and uh, and you just swirl them around. This is by far the easiest way to tie. And you're able to really uh, do it quickly, um, and that's how he tie, the rabbi ties. And he writes, "So I'm going to read the Torah. Sider is a yaf of sider. No, ma'ay dal derech shamar et av shamar halacha. K'moy shir chulia kidei shiyichach v'yishna v'yishlish at chelas kai. This that it needs to be three times needs to be just chelas. Not talking about the lavan, but for sure it needs to be that there's seven things because we said pachas is not pachas in seven." But it needs to be the, the, there needs to be at least three within them, and that is the minimum share of the of the wrapping of of tchelis. V'tana d'tana apaychas le'ipachas mi'sheva ala krichas. That's going on the actual krichas. Kai shem shalish min atchelis v'arvim min alavan. Mevnei shem maskel belavan masayim belavan. Kai shetchila samach leknaf kasher echad bechot lavan bechot shal tchelis vu shenikra vu shenikra kasher elyon v'achar ha'kirch shnechutim echad shal lavan. if Amram Goyin has a different Mahalach how to write, he doesn't do any sort of shiras, and he makes no spaces between them. He just alternates between Lavan and Tchelas, and he gets that you can either have between seven, and, you can either do seven or thirteen. Kacha Yigoy Delacher Kasher Atachtoin Chol Yachas Shel Lavan Vealeh Shel Tchelas Vechol Yishel Lavan Vealeh Chol Yishel Tchelas Vealeh Chol Yishel Lavan Vealeh Shel Tchelas Vealeh Shel Lavan Vekoisha Kasher Al Yaina Al Yain Vezehu Lo Yipachos Misheva. Should not be less than sheva. This kasher elyon that he's talking about is just tucking in within it. Just continue going, and that's how he understands the 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 gemara. Now, the Redzin mahalach, which is also the chabad mahalach, and they supposedly say it on the rizal. Um, the rizal wasn't talking about chelus. The rizal was talking about um, love and strings, but they're using the same mahalach 
of tying 7, 8, 11, 13, based on, I've seen many different reasons for it, and different ruches and Kabbalah and Yonim, uh, to explain what the seven, uh, the, the 8 and the 11 are trying to do. The, the 11 is split in half, and you get Vav, and you end up with Yudke Vavke, a whole great cheshben for it. But uh, bottom line, the reason why the Redzina Rebbe it was very clear to keep this tying method, as he writes in Sifra Ed Chelas, and there's also Paskin the Allah Chalamais and Shulchan Aracharav, is that Baha Nachina and Baha Salkina, Shagam Shazachina Le Chelas, Einlon Lishanis me Hagina, me Han Hagai, Shel Chamishik Sharem. We can't go away from our minog that we had before. The Tav Lamad Kricha, the Hainu, Shiva, Shmaina, the Chadis of Shlash Israel. Shachter goes on to a much more uh, uh, elaborate thing, had to understand each of the Gwaras, he holds that, it's, that uh, there needs to be groups of seven, groups of three, and he goes through a whole arichas to, to understand it, uh, so those that are, that are tamidim wear a much longer, uh, a, a much longer strings, as you see there's a many kshiris, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight kshiris here in this, uh, in this thing, there's there's groups of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different uh, of chulias within them, and how many strings they're made up with. Ach the bezman di ikat chelas shaos trichin ledakti hatayitav bekrichus asher zeo adin shall ptil haniskar bekra as mestomet trichin lenoi kedas rovery shaynim lasses l'chol apach zayin chulias. There need to be seven chulias. But lasses bein kol chulia bechulia kasher gomer shall kasher algabi kasher kiminig bezman azeh. Um, 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 so so we basically covered through at this point the main ways to tie to tie the tchelas. As I mentioned before, these are all ingenious ways to be mekayim uh, the sugya. One who goes through it and is convinced of one way over the other can wear has uh, can wear as they they came out. Um, but really, it's it, it's completely not ma'akiv. One could wear as they want to wear as they as they uh, as long as it's within one of these frameworks. Or they can be uh, ingenious and try to figure out a way to match up all the Gemaras. I would like to thank all of you for listening, for joining me on this on this fascinating journey. Um, I'll be sticking around to answer all your questions if you have any. And again, I appreciate your time for joining me, and thank you very, very much.